Dennis Miller here, basking in the glorious wake of modest achievement. Joining us now, um, there's a film out, Honor Killings. For more information, go to honorkillings.com. And uh, this one of the the uh, gals behind the film, Dr. Kanta Ahmed. Doc, what's shaking? Hello, Dennis. The movie is actually called Honor Diaries. But oh, I'm sorry. On my sheet Honor it says Killings. Honor Killings. Pardon no me. No problem. Honordiaries.com. Uh, Thank you so much for bringing this to the fore. Well, I, mean, I, I feel embarrassed, but I, on my copy it says the wrong name. So uh, my apologies. Let's start off. Um, you know, honest to God, Doc, if if there wasn't bombs going off in Sabero pizza parlors, I'd still be a little pissed at Islam about this treatment of uh, women. I, I don't know how the feminists over here in this country aren't just demanding that Democratic legislators get a little more uh, riled up about this. Man, the, well, you explain. The indignities heaped on women by these cats blows my mind. Well, I think you certainly are speaking to a resonance that many Muslim feminists in the Muslim majority world and here in the West feel exactly the same. And many of these actions that are conducted purportedly in the name of Islam are done so in the name of man-made Islam. This was never the intention of what I understand to be my faith. But um, unfortunately, it's become a, it's a reality. It's very easy to marginalize 50% of the population that's physically weaker, often less literate, um, often given no individual rights so that they can be treated as chattel and become the vessels for honor. You just spoke a piece before I was listening about uh, pregnant women's attire in a gym. Women's bodies have become a symbol of honor culturally, and this isn't unique to Islam, this predates Islam, but it's very prevalent in Muslim-majority societies at the moment. And that's why we made a movie about this. Well, why isn't every gal in that faith on board? They're just brutalized by the men? Like, my wife just went to uh, Dubai and uh, on the way yeah. somewhere, and she spent a day there, and she said it was really amazing to her that she'd go to the malls and she really believes that women underneath the burqa or whatever the, the entire gear is called have – she's a – Dennis, I would see shoes that were amazing like uh, Manolo's and stuff. She's, I swear to God, the stores all sell it. She's, I think, underneath there. They're all wearing that. But why – So uh, Mrs. Miller is very astute about that and certainly that was my experience when I lived in Saudi Arabia and uh, worked and lived among uh, women such as that. So yes – Many of the veilings that you see across the Middle East are enforced. And if, they is, if there is no written legislation, for example, in Saudi Arabia, it's still enforced based on oral legislation. It's entirely a movement to control the freedom of women by immobilizing them. Saudi Arabia is a country where girls and women are immobilized, prevented from traveling, prevented from entering and exiting the country without male permission, preventing from riding bicycles, preventing from exercising, all in the name of honor. And this has to change, but it's not a value shared by the majority of Muslim men and women. It's imposed by powers to their advantage. Yeah, yeah. You know, ironically, it's always the women who have the most cojones. I, I, I swear, because something about the mothering of children and that, and they're the ones who kind of get pushed around and treated like chattel till they reach a point where you step over the line, and then you've got hell to pay. And uh, well, I, I guess... That's, in, that's, um, that's certainly true, and it's nice of you to say, but a lot of women, including myself, are empowered because of the mothers and fathers that we had. And both of my parents are Muslim, for instance, and yet we've been educated to have the same opportunities, rights, and privileges as men. And that goes back for three generations in my family. So we need, as Muslims, to elevate the rest of the Muslim-majority society. Very concerning is that these practices are now penetrating into the West. We see, for instance, female genital mutilation in the Somali community in the Pacific Northwest in the United States, and also in my native uh, London and Britain. So you will find the movie addresses all of these things and how activists from within the community are changing this practice. We're talking about the film Honor Diaries, and you can go to honordiaries.com. Break down the schematic of the film for me. It takes a look at how many women or how many victims? Uh, yes, there are nine activists in the movie, all of them women, many of them Muslim but not all, working from places as diverse as Sudan, countering female genital mutilation, to places in Britain where one of our activists has actually changed the law and educated the British police force to recognize forced marriage, to women here in North America who are helping um, girls who are victims of honor violence or um, uh, other um, matters, and uh, uh, a couple of other of us, myself included, who provide some 
uh, expert commentary. It's a short movie. You can watch it on iTunes for $10. You can host your own screenings. It's been screened in over 100 venues in the United States uh, and globally, including in the United Nations, the National Press Club, even at the Cairo Opera House earlier on this week. So it's something that we like to tell people about, and we're grateful to the Dennis Miller Show for making that possible. Well, listen, uh, at the, as they say at the uh, Cairo Opera House, it's not over till the Burkhead Lady sings. Right? <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, uh, Honor Diaries will be showing tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m., followed by a conversation about the film at the Cardozo School of Law in New York. For more information, go to Honor diaries.com and good for the cardozo school for holding us for god's sakes yeah. i remember when colleges were about open discourse i i won't even go to a college now to perform it's so close mind i guess they went after uh, ms hers Ali. I'm, I'm sorry I'm, if i'm blanking on her name but uh at the I one college they they knocked her back from speaking at the commencement i thought oh my That's god fine. what has happened that's right. That's at Brandeis. And in fact, schools like Benjamin Cardozo the Law School, where I have a number of colleagues who practice law and have been trained by there, are exactly the benchmark for how American schools should be behaving. We want to broaden the discourse for this conversation, not penalize individuals who might be expanding the discourse based on, you know, purported values. Very unfortunate what happened to Ms. Hersey Ali in terms of the retraction of an honored degree and doesn't enhance the circumstances of women and girls for whom she advocates. Gals, if... if Barack Obama can rally out here with uh, a 31-year-old law school woman saying that her and her friends get together and they're beefing because they don't get paid for their diaphragm. For God's sakes, you just heard genital mutilation moved into the Somali sector in the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. Rise up, for God's sakes. This is beyond politics. This is science fiction. Jeez, it drives me crazy. Mr. Miller, just to put that into perspective, actually the American community in the Pacific Northwest has greatly helped. And what they've determined is trying to educate the population, prevent girls from going back to Somalia for these practices and engaging the medical community. So the American Medical Association has been very helpful in that. And this is part of how we counter this. Because these things are unacceptable in the, in the experience of secular, democratic, pluralistic societies like yours, which is also mine, this enables these practices to be made pariah and eliminate them from the lives of generations of women and girls. That's where we can use the power of legislation and societal expectation to change the definition of honor. So it's, it is happening in the United States, but we need it to, to develop more. Yeah, it needs to be a reverse contagion. We've got enough weird contagions in this world. This is one we've got to blot out. Folks, any time a guy tells you that he and some other guys got together and put together a style book for faith, and part of it involves the clitoris, it's just, what are you, nuts? What, what are you, nuts? Come on, you're nuts. Uh, Kanta's website is com. Her Twitter is Miss, M-I-S-S, Diagnosis. The film Honor Diaries. For more information, go to honordiaries.com. And like I said, it will be showing tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m., followed by a rap session with the gals about the film at the Cardoza School of Law in New York. Uh, for more information, go to honordiaries.com. All right, uh, Doc, go get him. Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Have a uh, all right. Later, Gator.